on the median lobe and I tried to do these uh, bladder neck incisions to be able to get under the middle lobe when we do the, the enucleation. Okay, so that's middle lobe. And also we can progress anteriorly. So um, sometimes uh, this anterior dissection is easier and you don't use a lot of uh, energy to, to cut it. Just do a little bit of uh, uh, pressure and uh, it goes uh, through the normal plane. But some of the times you have to do some cutting. But we are very close to the capsule anteriorly. So you can see I'm firing tangentially to separate the adenoma from the capsule anteriorly. Uh, there we go. That's that's uh, constantly, I think, in the midline you have to cut the bladder neck, which is a, a separate uh, anatomical entity from the adenoma. I I didn't realize this until I started doing enucleations. You can you can um, you can see very clearly that the adenoma uh, and the bladder neck are separate structures. Okay, so I would progress on this side as much as I can, but uh, of course we can go around it. This is hemostasis. You see, I can use 80 watts and rotate the fiber very fast to uh, achieve good hemostasis, uh, and it's important to spend the time in doing hemostasis. Here we go to the other uh, side. We go to the other side. Always stopping for hemostasis is not a problem. It's usually what you have to do uh, to stop for hemostasis. Okay. So here we are entering the opposite uh, side. So now the capsule would be in the right side of the image and the, the prostate would be on the left. The adenoma would be on the left and I am trying to get up uh, anteriorly and see if I can uh, find uh, the bladder neck as we did on the other side. So you see this is all prostatic capsule. I am progressing uh, little by little, little by little, pushing, pushing, pushing the adenoma and I guess at some stage we will pop into the bladder again. Mm on the other side, you see. So I always try to uh, break into the bladder um, at uh, 2 and um, 10 o'clock in the bladder neck because if you try to get to the bladder neck pushing lower you would risk uh, going into... And, and here we are. You see this is already uh, bladder neck. As I said on the right side it's a capsule, on the left side is the adenoma and I think this is now joint with uh, with the, the other side. So what we are doing, if you can uh, imagine this, we are progressively separating the adenoma from the capsule. Now the adenoma is uh, starting to be more free uh, from the capsular attachments, but it's still inside the prostatic fossa. Here again I want to see the, the UOD in the other side. You see that's the UO, we are in the bladder neck, so <coughs> I'll have to cut the bladder neck uh, a little bit because we want to get uh, uh, underneath the, uh, the middle lobe, as we were uh, commenting before. Most people thought that green light could not be used for enucleation because uh, most people thought automatically that enucleation can only be done with a uh, straight firing fiber, but the truth is that when we get uh, to the bladder neck, you know, if we had a straight firing fiber, green light could probably hit the bladder. But as we use a lateral uh, firing uh, fiber, side firing fiber, there's uh, no risk of uh, of damaging the bladder, and we can cut the the, the bladder neck very easily without risking um, uh, damaging the, the bladder at all. So here you see we're getting under in one side, we have the bladder neck and we can continue cutting it. You see we go under the adenoma again towards the other side and we'll get out to the bladder neck again. There we are. Uh, looking for it here. So. 
I don't like to cut the attachments at 6 o'clock right away because uh, in my experience it fixes the prostate in the midline and it allows me to try to go to the anterior part. You remember we did an incision to separate the adenoma from the sphincter but many times this incision is not complete and thus you have to you have to go you have to go uh, anteriorly that's a capsule anteriorly that's a, I guess adenoma okay and ah, the adenoma what has happened is that I have pushed uh, the adenoma and it's already flipping into the into the prostate I, I try to do this kind of maneuver um, to try to see how much tissue is uh, fixing the adenoma to the sphincter area you see there is some apical attachment and this is a critical part of the operation because we don't want to damage the sphincter so here what I'm doing is I'm trying to cut this anterior mm, attachments anteroapical attachments to the to the sphincteric area and of course I'm pushing the adenoma to make the cut as far away as possible from the sphincter um, if the initial incision is a little bit deeper um, usually this step is very simple and it doesn't um, almost sometimes it is not necessary you can go with your cystoscope around the apex of the adenoma and uh, there's nothing joining it to the anterior uh, capsule or to the sphincter area but if the incisions are not deep enough then sometimes you can have this kind of situation where the apex is still attached to the sphincteric area so you have to be careful not to hit the sphincter and to follow the, the incisions you made at the beginning uh, to use them as a reference to avoid uh, any damage to the, to the sphincter and you can see that now the prostate is almost completely released uh, anteriorly and if we push, if we push the, the adenoma, you see it will rotate, it will rotate and it will uh, go inside the bladder. Uh, you see, now the adenoma is flipping uh, into the bladder. We have uh, this adenomere, which is uh, going to make it a little bit tricky to, to detach it from the bladder neck area. That's bladder neck at 7 o'clock, and this is... Uh, this uh, small adenomer and this is bladder neck on the other side so we will have to um, to try to dissect it again from the capsule uh, carefully and very smoothly and here I'm lifting it with the tip of the resectoscope to be able to cut the attachments to the capsule and uh, if I wanted to, to summarize the the advantages of green light for enucleation I think one of them is the, the fantastic hemostasis. Secondly, I think the amount of power or energy we use is very minimal. We typically do these uh, uh, enucleations using 50 or 60,000 joules of energy, which causes limited uh, damage to the, to the capsule. You see that here I'm cutting under the middle lobe at 6 o'clock, trying to join the two um, the bladder neck in both sides and now the adenoma is already in the bladder okay so as I was saying the advantages were the good hemostasis the low energy uh, application with the minimal damage to the to the capsule and I think uh, it's it's very anatomical it uh, it is a joy to perform for the surgeon uh, much more interesting than um, vaporization which can become a little bit um, a little bit um, boring after some time or in, in, in large prostates especially and here you see how the side firing fiber uh, carries very little danger for the for the bladder here we are close I guess to the or orietal orifice I'm trying to check where it is okay so there's no danger in cutting the remaining attachment at six o'clock of the adenoma to the capsule. There you go. You see now the whole adenoma is inside the bladder. Visibility usually worsens a little bit because 
uh, and now I am doing hemostasis of the uh, fossa, of the prostatic fossa. After a good hemostasis, uh, visibility should be nearly perfect, and this also is an advantage for morcellation. Morcellation is a procedure by which the adenoma is fragmented into smaller pieces and uh, sucked out of the bladder, and it needs uh, very good visibility because basically what you're doing is introducing a machine in the in the mechanical device in the prostatic fossa. There you go. That's the sphincter. Mm, it is uh, very nicely preserved, and here I am doing uh, further hemostasis to get a good visibility. See there are small mm, small um, pieces of tissue hanging which are of no consequence I think and if there is any part of the tissue that is bumping it's uh, protruding into the fossa or if we left a piece of adenoma the nice thing, the other nice thing of the green light is that you can uh, use vaporization to complete the procedure. You see the fossa is immense we went all the way down to the capsule and this will guarantee that uh, the adenoma will not grow back. So we check the UOs again, that's trigone, that's bladder neck. Um, you can cut the bladder neck if you want uh, to open it up even further or you can leave it if you want. I really don't know if this has any influence in the development of bladder neck stenosis. Um, there we go, some hemostasis at the bladder neck area. It's important to ensure that the hemostasis is perfect before we introduce the uh, morcellator device because you want uh, to have uh, almost perfect visibility. Again, that's the UO and that's uh, the bladder neck. You see it's a, a separate anatomical entity from the adenoma. It's uh, very interesting way to see the anatomy of the prostate. Okay, so we're completing this and later on we will change the instrument. We need a nephroscope to be able to introduce the morcellator blade because the fiber is flexible and it's compatible with a straight telescope, but the morcellator is uh, much thicker than the fiber and we need to use uh, to change the instrument, so we will try to make this change as fast as possible. Here in the bladder there's very good visibility, you can see the adenoma in one piece. It is an N-block enucleation of the adenoma, we haven't done incisions. Uh, when I started doing enucleation I did incisions uh, trying, to, trying to mirror the homium laser enucleation of the prostate procedure but uh, gradually I understood that uh, making incisions with the green light fiber is, is more difficult. It's not such a good cutting. Uh, when the fiber is embedded between, uh, you know, inside an incision, it degrades very fast. So um, that's why I chose to have um, a different technique where we take the adenoma in one piece without having to do five and seven uh, o'clock incisions. So now I'm changing the instrument. As you see, we have introduced the uh, nephroscope, and now we will put the morcellator uh, blade inside the bladder. You see, good visibility is paramount, especially to avoid lesioning the bladder. You see, that's the morcellator uh, rotating uh, blade. This is the piranha system. So what you have to do is to suck the tissue and then lift up the the blade to separate it from the bladder and this way uh, you will suck the adenoma and cut it, in cut it in little pieces that will be extracted. So this is a way to use green light that ensures a complete uh, removal of the adenoma that allows to retrieve tissue for analysis for histology which is another uh, interesting uh, possibility in certain patients and um, it is a relatively fast way of treating larger glands that would take longer to, to vaporize. Even with the moxie fiber, 
and um, the 180 watt laser vaporizing very large adenomas takes time and energy and sometimes a second fiber although soon the fibers will allow for much more energy output which will simplify the, the, the situation but uh, in my view it's very nice to be able to have a laser that allows for very efficient vaporization like the uh, 180 watt XPS green light laser and also enucleation of the whole adenoma sometimes partial enucleation of the middle lobe uh, you just have to know your anatomy and uh, to be careful to, to make sure that these procedures are carried out without negative uh, consequences